Um, I've been the mentor for Navajo Mountain's first uh, robotics team, and actually their first robotics team, period. So uh, it's the first time they've ever built a robot to a large scale. For the most part, um, all the hardware on the robot, we had to make it ourselves. Um, getting parts out where we are is, is very difficult. Um, it's, it would be a full day trip just to get to a hardware store and back. So if we're missing something like, hey, we need this, instead of just going, wow, we can run to the store, it's how can we either go around the problem with an alternative solution or how can we fabricate it? How can we make it ourselves? And that's how we, that was our philosophy all along is how can we just make it ourselves? Um, everything had to be unique, had to be our own. Our, we initially found it even about first so through a group in Australia having a program called Robots in the Outback and they were challenged to bring that program to the United States with a um, very rural native school and they came to our school saying hey would you like to try this out and we'll sponsor you for the first year and I we absolutely jumped all over it um, I thought it was a great idea the students thought it was a great idea and we ran with it it is a miracle greater than the Jamaican bobsled team because 35 years ago when I was in Navajo Mountain, the thought of pavement was beyond a dream, much less a high school. So the fact that they have such a small student population, who cares? They have a high school there. And then on top of it, a robotics team. <laughs> we eventually got in touch with a few teams out here that kind of took us under wing and started mentoring us. And, and one thing about this competition that just blows me away is how everyone's willing to help. Everyone's like, hey, you need some help? And they'll jump on and they'll help out. And they would just shoot us back some answers like, hey, try this, try that. You know, just trial and error. You know, we put the frame together wrong five times. At least five times. And just take it apart, try again. Take it apart, try again. Take it apart, try again. Just do that over and over and over again. And not be afraid to fail. Because we know we're going to make mistakes, we know we're going to fail, but if we keep trying, eventually we will succeed. And you only have to get it to work once. You can fail a million times, but if you get it once, you've done it. You know how to get it right every time after that. And that's just what we've been doing. So practice match 29 is about to begin. Oh. They didn't think they had, this was they didn't think they could do it at first. They didn't think that it was something that they could do. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of kids. We only have 32 students period in the entire school and not everyone's going to want to be involved. But even with very few resources, very few kids uncertainty if we can even do it. We tried. And then we made it here. We didn't think we'd get it here. But to us, getting here, competing means that we win. We've won no matter how we place, because we did it. And to us, it's we didn't think we could. And we still tried it anyways, and we succeeded. I just want to say how incredibly proud I am of these kids. Their determination and their motivation is absolutely inspiring, um, because there's nothing they can't do. There really isn't. They can do anything. They don't have internet at home. Okay. None of our kids have internet at home. Some of our kids don't have running water. Some of our kids don't have electricity yet. Um, some of them live very traditional. Um, but that's not even a limitation to them. That's just how they grew up. They don't see that as a problem. That's just okay. And they'll figure out a solution. And being in a remote area where you don't, where you can't just buy a solution, where you have to create your own solution, they've been doing it their whole life which is actually a massive advantage to them. That they don't look at a problem and go, wow, can we order this? They look at a problem and say, how? How can we make it work? And they make it work. So that's, being rural and being remote, it can be a detriment, but it can also be a massive advantage because they are self-reliant. And that's something that's very difficult to teach and they, they live it every single day.